Good morning. How is everybody today? Good deal. How many ever heard of Dan Seal? Anybody out there ever heard of him? A few. A few. Okay, good deal. Well, he ain't here today, but we're going to do one of his songs after a while, so be listening for that. Right now, Brenda's going to yell for you, though.
Father, I lift Pastor Chet up to you as he brings the word. God, I ask that you would give him the words to say that we need to hear this morning. And God, if there's one amongst us that don't know you, I pray that today would be the day that that relationship status would change. God, I ask that you'd go on through this day with us and on through life. Forgive us of sin. In Jesus' name I pray. Amen. Amen. A campfire, some coffee from a tin cup in my hand. Told y'all dance here was coming. Playing that old guitar. A friend I understand. Sure soothes the wrinkles in my soul. Sleeping in the moonlight. A blanket for a bed. In my mind Waking up In the morning With an eagle Overhead Makes me want To fly away Before my time And I thank God
visions now I see her standing under and to the familiar voice I hear her once more the back table is ready up in heaven it's supper time upon What 
when our ministry teams are back rolling. We did get an arena uh, night last night going, but if you can look on this bulletin, it gives you a lot of information about the church. Uh, take advantage of that. We'll go down our uh, announcements here quickly. We have a food drive, uh, uh, dry beans, rice, macaroni and cheese. They're uh, taking that up, a collection. It goes to Jasper Share. So you can uh, drop that off in the foyer before or after church any Wednesday or Sunday or even during the week if you stop by the church office. Don't forget the yellow communication cards in the seats in front of you. That's our way uh, as the church grows like this. It's, it's our way of staying and being able to communicate with you. So if there's anything on there, if you have a prayer request, how many of you thankful God hears and answers prayer? Amen. There's a spot for prayer requests or anything, a note that you might need to write down and say, hey, I'm interested in something you mentioned during announcements. And put that in the wooden churches at the back. We don't pass the hat like Mike said, but if you give uh, your tithes and offers, you can drop them off as one in the foyer, one in each backside of the auditorium. Drop that communication card in the church offering or in the little metal buckets when you leave the exit uh, doors. And that way we can keep, uh, you know, stay in contact with you and get with you and let you know. Sale Barn, uh, JC3 has a, a sale barn and, and they have a neat ministry. It's a let group of ladies. They have a lot of apparel for our church. So I, I've got a, they told me I had to model all this stuff today. Thank, I don't have to put it all on. Amen. But uh, a lot of this I found out is stuff that my wife bought. So I guess I could throw I told her I was going to start throwing them out like I do at the rodeo. You know, throw them t-shirts out. She said, I've already paid for that, honey. I said, I'm not throwing it out anyway, so <laughs> give it away. But anyway, we wanted to show you. they got some neat stuff. Uh, don't forget the caps. I, I do a lot of a lot of outreach. Being a horseshoe, I see a lot of people go to a lot of barns, a lot of homes, a lot of, a lot of feed stores and throughout the day. And so I always wear my JC3 hats. My wife got me a new shirt, but... They're, they're an opportunity to open up a door. Uh, I was in Ben Wheeler, Texas, the tax store about a month ago, and they said, what, what does that stand for? And so it gave me an opportunity to share. Mr. Marvin is not going to like this shirt that I've got coming up here. But now this is pretty cool. This is for the ladies. They offered me one, but I thought I was going to pay it. But <laughs> anyway, I have to see if Marvin really didn't want to look at me. But Mr. Miss Nana loves the Hebrews, so we was laughing about that. But this is Miss Allison's shirt. So, hey, ladies, we got something for all y'all. And uh, last but not least, if you have to wear a mask, look what we got here, Miss Donna. <laughs> Who made these? Who come up with these? Miss Bobby, Miss Donna, and all of them. Miss Donna sent us a picture with that mask. So, anyway, if you have to wear a mask, you might as well fly the flags for the greatest church in the world. All right. I'm going to set this over here. Let Cody come get that for me. Thank you, man. <laughs> went out. Uh, Cody, how old are you, Cody? 29? Yeah. Cody's 29. Step up here right quick. Uh, he's going to preach today. <laughs> man, I miss having teenagers at home, all right? Where was that other night? I was over to Buddy's. He had some kids, and they was roping, you know, and, and so he, he had two twin boys, they're about 12 or 13, and, and Mr. Gary, he said, well, we'll walk up here to the house, and he, he started telling his boys, he said, go fill up that water trough over there, and then check that one over there, it's dirty, pour it out, put some water in it, go ahead and feed the steers and feed the horses. And I looked at him and said, I miss my kids living at home, maybe. <laughs> <laughs> but anyway, uh, living at home, pastoring the church, Cody grew up, I was a pastor of a church most of his life. But one time, how old were you when you wore a diaper to church with a pacifier? Four. Oh, yeah. He was 14 to 16, and I was trying to do a sermon about being spiritually immature. You know, the Bible says you, you, you need milk because you can't eat meat of the Word of God. He was basically telling the church that we needed to grow up spiritually, so I talked Cody into putting on a cloth diaper. Can I get a good amen? Yeah. Got on the internet and found a huge pacifier. I mean, it was stuck out that far. And I come in church carrying him like this. So you got to love your dad. <laughs> I said, I'll never forget it, Dad. You don't have to tell the story. But anyway, he, he wore a cloth diaper and a huge pacifier. And I promise you, nobody there had a problem remembering the sermon. They still remember it to this day. They said, oh, that's that boy came in. You turned him in church with a cloth diaper and a pacifier in the mouth. 
But you know, sometimes visuals cause us to remember things, so I had to bring that up. I love you, buddy. He got here late today, so I thought I'd bring him up until everybody wore a from the church when he was 16 years old. All right. <laughs> he said he'll be here at 8 o'clock next Sunday. <laughs> All right. But don't forget, take advantage of the sale bar when you leave. Anything like shirts and hats, they make $5 off of it and turn around and donate it all to the hospitality team so we can eat food on Wednesday night. Yeah. Amen. Amen. Praise God. Last night, we had our first arena night in a while. I don't know about y'all, but I was happy to get some dust in my nostrils. Yeah. Amen. Yeah. I'm going to get this Cheryl at some point. You can scroll some of those pictures that whenever they come up. Look at that. There's something. Mutton busting was a, was a huge success. Uh, I gotta tell y'all something funny. Dustin was working the sheep there. You see him running out with the sheep, and he said, "Pastor Ted, I got a question. What are you feeding these sheep?" He said, "I've been, I've, I've grabbed a lot of sheep and a bucket of sheep, and these are the fattest sheep I've ever grabbed." He said, "Are you, are you, you feed them total feed?" You know, we fell some horse feed, but it was funny. I said, "No, they're just on grass." He said, "They're, they're, they're some fat sheep." I said, "Well, they hadn't anything to do. They've been off. They hadn't given any exercise." So mutton busting was good. We had a Roping, uh, we had uh, guys, we had two first time bull riders on the front row over here, got on their first bull. <laughs> the crazy for is they weren't limping when they came in church. <laughs> That's a good day. Uh, Wednesday night, we've been having pizza. Uh, last night, hospitality team uh, provided hot dogs and didn't charge a dime for the arena night. So, man, I appreciate that. Yes. I told everybody we had a concession stand and Miss Lori said it's free. I told everybody that and they started smiling big time. Then. <laughs> free concession stand. So Wednesday night, if I'm not mistaken, we're going to have hot dogs. It was, we had plenty, so we're going to have hot dogs Wednesday night. And the meal on Wednesdays is at 6.15. Is that still good? If you want to say 6, Lori? 6.15 is fine. It's easy to make hot dogs. And then we have church, Bible study in here. At uh, 7 o'clock. Men's prayer breakfast every Monday morning. That'll be in the morning at 6 a.m. The youth are back meeting. I'm very thankful that our, our teenagers are meeting. Uh, Miss Tish came to me Wednesday night right before church and was looking for a JC3 pen. And I had no idea where they were. We opened the cabinet and we found a whole box of pens. But I'm, I shared this with you. I'm going to share it again. Did you know youth ministry is extremely important? Can I get it again? Amen. Whether it be down to the little ones, to the nursery, all the way to the teenagers. And then us, we're just big grown kids. Amen. Amen. But Miss Tish was looking at her pen. I thought, what are you going to do with it? She said, I'm going to take a Sharpie. And I'm going to ask the students, the teenagers, to write the name of someone who shared their faith with them and planted seed in their life. And I'm going to get the teenagers to take them with them to school. Can I get a good amen? amen. I don't know about you, but that's a pretty dang good idea. Get, get the word of God to these kids and to remind them. So we do a lot of stuff around here for the teens. And Miss Allison told me last night, we're, I'm going to get our two bull riders. I'm sure y'all going to be standing up. But y'all stand up and let us see. All right. They, these two guys, they were the bull riders. Come up here right quick. Oh, boy. I love, love kids. Hey, let me tell you something happened last night. Me and Miss Allison, we went, we went home and uh, we had dirt in our nose and we was happy about it. We was glad to see that arena get used. And we took, I was, I had, I've never had too much fun running a tractor as we did kind of killing up that arena. I was glad to see something going on. But she said, you know, but I'm so proud of this little family. They've all been baptized, coming to church. And a whole bunch is coming. But uh, it, it, before the thing started, this little man went to Miss Tish and said, hi, there's Miss Tish. And so he goes over and gives her a hug. And, uh, you know, it's a blessing to have people that will minister along with Mr. Cody. And, and the reason I say this, if God put it on your heart to help with our, our youth group, get with Miss Tish or some of them. If not, pray for those that do work with our team. But ministry is about so many different things. He came up to her and gave her a hug. She hugged him. Allison's telling me all this and said, well, they visited, and he was saying, man, I love our youth group so much. He said, I'm getting big. I'm getting to go upstairs now. Amen. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you, buddy. That's an old bull right there. But you know, our, our youth are important. Our, our kids down to the nursery. So I'm thankful about Wednesday night. 6.30, is that when y'all start? 
6.30. And they have, they have food, too. Can they get a good amen on that? All right. Watch party. When you're at church, if you're here live and you can on your phone, start a watch party. We started doing that and reach a whole new round of several hundred people just because of, of doing that on Facebook. It is another way to, to spread our tent stakes out. We're working on a camera to get our sound and picture better. Those that are watching online, a lot of people are still watching online that may, may have a little health condition or something. Or maybe that you live way off. There's people in other states watching, but we welcome y'all. Every Sunday, we have a men's Bible study in my office at 9 a.m. There's usually three or four guys. Today, there was nine in there. They killed, must have offered some food back there. Yes, I think we're going to have a women's group Bible study on next Sunday. It's going to be the first time. Okay, first time for the ladies. Yeah. going to have a little, a little Bible study. Miss Sheila and myself are going to do the study. All right. And Sheila are going to kick it off. So y'all are welcome to join at 9 a.m. That'll start next Sunday. And uh, I, I went in there about 10 o'clock and had to fight for a chair to sit down. I was going to make some notes in there. I said, that's good for the guys that's, and now ladies too. We are interested in looking. We're looking for a bus driver. You might want to maybe get on the list to drive the bus. And uh, let's see, I quilt. This was donated by a little lady that attends our church at is selling raffle tickets. It's uh, five tickets for six dollars or one dollar. It goes to raise money for the handicapped rodeo. So take advantage of that. Everybody say I love my pastor. I got you now, don't I? Hey, children are important. I want you guys to pray. We're looking for a, a couple to two to two hundred volunteers that would help us with children's ministry. We're our goal. My heart is to get our children's church buckaroos back going. It's, it may take a few weeks. We're going to let school get going a couple of weeks. And we want to make wise choices. But at some point in the future, our goal is to get our buckaroos back going and learning about the Bible. Amen. Like the kiddos. So if you would like to help, take that communication card to put on there. Hey, I'm interested in helping in some form or fashion with, with the children's ministry. When it does kick back off, we don't know exactly when. But we are... Uh, Working toward that, but if, if that's something that you would want to like once a month, you could teach a class or help us out, that would be greatly appreciated. We are also going to open up for some applications for nursery worker. You will have to do a background check for that, whether it be volunteer or it may work out uh, even uh, a, a, another way. But if you're interested in the nursery, put that down on your communication card. Next Sunday is going to be a potluck. Uh, the ladies that asked that, so there is a sign-up list at the welcome desk as you leave church. There's a sign-up list for desserts, uh, food, different entrees, whatever you're going to bring. You can see Miss Ann or anybody at the welcome desk as you leave. That way, if you bring something with you, we'll have a potluck dinner after church uh, this next Sunday. So we're looking forward to that. Uh, today, we're going to do some baby dedications. If you are going to be dedicating a child, y'all kind of be getting ready. It won't be just a few minutes. Uh, I do need to ask for some prayer from y'all. This week, uh, my uncle would be my mother's youngest brother. She was born in 1924. So Uncle JP was a 34 model, I believe. He was 10 years younger. I just remember Mama saying when her and her sisters were hoeing cotton, JP was so little that they put him under a shade tree on a blanket, and they would hoe cotton and hoe back by and come back by and check on him as they was holding that cotton. But Uncle JT, uh, he had had some, some health issues, and me and Miss Allison and my brother and sister-in-law, we went to see Uncle JT last Thursday after I got off work. And, and uh, JT was, he, he was, he was struggling in the last days of his life, a well-respected, godly man. So we all went down, and we just gathered around his bed, and we just prayed for a peaceful home going for JT. And, he did go home to be with the Lord uh, that night, Thursday night. So right after church, I got to throw on a different shirt, load up the sheep, jump the horses in the trailer. And I got to go fast as I can to Beulah. We're going to have the service at Graveside in Beulah. So pray, pray for the Hamburg family and all of us, me and my brother. Or I got to do a little bit where do some things in the little service. This is going to be a Graveside. So if you see me get out here quick today, I just got to I gotta get to the, the cemetery to, to do that service at uh, 115. So pray for Uncle JT and his family. It's the Hamburg family and all of us. Uh, I believe that's all of our announcements. We're going to go ahead and uh, do our baby dedication. I've never got to do a baby dedication since I 
been here at JC3, but I like them. I'm going to ask this little family to come on up, if you will. And uh, we're going to do, we've got a new baby here. Actually, our, our, at last night, we had a little practice rope, and, and one, of the, uh, one of the guys told me, he said, Pastor Chet, the reason you haven't seen us is we've got a new baby. This baby is a week and a half old. I said, hey, man, that's good. So they're going to be wanting to do a baby dedication a little bit later, too. So we got a family here, and it looks like we got some, a bunch of family. That's good. Y'all all come on up here on the stage. All right. That's right. We don't need nobody falling down. All right. Y'all y'all more than welcome to come on up. Yep, you out there? Yes, ma'am. All right. I'm going to let you introduce yourself and everybody else who will be dedicating as well. Sorry, I don't <laughs> I'll hold it for you. Just treat it like an ice cream cone. Well, my name is Lola Finley. I haven't been here in the church long. I'm just so glad that I found a comfortable church home to go to. Um, we've been kind of in and out of churches trying to find the right place. And I've got to say, this place has just it's been wonderful so far. It's just laid back. It's, it feels like home. Um, I don't really have any family. Um, my family's down in Houston and don't have much to do with them. Um, these are my neighbors who have adopted us. And of sorts, Mama and Pop, then become Granny and Papa. And I wanted them up here with us today because they have meant so much to us over the last few years. They just spoil these, these ones rotten. Um, this is Miss Abby Haynes.
to raise our children in a godly home. In Jesus' name. And everybody said? Amen. 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 Y'all give them a hand clap. We, we have a surprise. This 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 um, young lady here, here. This lady here, uh, she's a new one of our teenagers in the youth group. She loves her mom. And so she came to me and said, we're gonna do something special. So you're gonna take this over or how are we gonna do this? I'm gonna let mom grab it she can help on. All right, James, could you hand that box up this away? This little lady, she's been calling and texting this week saying, can we do a little surprise at the baby dedication? So, here we go. Anything you want to say? James, you've got something to work. <laughs> All right. This is going to be a, uh, basically a, uh, a, gender a gender reveal. So, another one December 29th. And this thoughtful young lady did this on her own. So. Uh, and the, for one who can't keep secrets, she has made sure she Ouch. kept this a secret. <laughs> it's been a miracle. She said she kept a secret. So, okay. all right, we're ready. I was scared. <laughs> That's pretty cool. That was very thoughtful. Oh ah! boy. God's going to be the same God in the valley 
as he is when we're on top of the mountain. Aren't you glad that God is steady? Amen. How many of you ever had an old horse that you said, you know, that old horse there, he's solid. I always use the word solid. That means there ain't much he's going to see or she's going to see that ain't going to freak them out and spook them. I mean, uh, horses are capable of getting spooked and a horse will hurt you when you're scared. But there are some old horses out there and you say that one is solid. Or I remember old bucking bulls. Dustin can relate to this. There's some old bulls, they're just solid. They're going to be about two jumps around to the left or right. You can just bet the house on it. Yep. They're going to buck, you know, if they're in Montana, they're going to buck if they're in the backyard of Texas. It doesn't matter. And anywhere in between. And so God is solid. Amen. Amen. He never changes. He's always there for us. Now our circumstances in life change. But I had we've all faced some hard times in life, but it's been so humbling to me that even when I went through some hard times, I had did my best to keep my eyes on Jesus. Amen. The Bible says he's the author and the finisher of our faith. And if you keep your eyes on Christ, do your best to keep a good attitude. Any of you ever been tempted to have a bad attitude? Oh, yeah. We've got about 40% that ain't lying today. That's good. That's good. But our attitudes are something we're always daily and probably by the minute working on. But Job chapter 42, verse 10, and then I'm going to skip to verse 12. It says, when Job prayed for his friends, the Lord did what? Restored, Restored his fortune. You know, it's something about praying for people. Even though you may be going through hell on earth, if you will be selfless and care about the needs of others, it seems like God moves faster on your behalf. Because it's very easy for us to be selfish. But he says, when he prayed for his friends, the Lord restored. Everybody say restored. Restored. Restored, restored his fortunes. In fact, the Lord gave him twice as much as before. So God can give us double for our trouble. Can I get a good amen? amen? But our key that we have to do is keep our eyes on the Lord, number one. Not only that, our attitude literally determines our altitude. It's hard. I'm not going to lie to you. It's hard to have a good attitude when things aren't going great. How many of us can say amen because we've been there? Amen. We've done that, got the t-shirt and the cap. But we keep our eyes on the Lord. He never leaves us and he never forsakes us. I know in my life God restored me. I think about, I cannot, words cannot express. I woke up at 5 o'clock this morning thinking about how I was going to get this to you and give you one little quick testimony of how God has blessed me. I, uh, I am so thankful for my wife. Can I get a good amen? amen. amen. How many of y'all love my wife? Amen. Amen. <laughs> we love her. She, she's a sweetheart. And man, just when my life was, was kind of hard, God knew just what he was doing, and he, he blessed me with a wife. Man, I am so, so thankful. Man, <laughs> I, I can't express it enough. I love my wife. I was thinking last night. Now, let me tell you, all you know, me and Allison, we, we, will, we will buy and sell something, maybe. We bought a trailer. Now, remember Wednesday night, I said, oh, I missed my stock trailer. You know, and, and I had two I had a two horse trailer. We said we was gonna put all the sheep in a two horse trailer. And Miss Allison said it's gonna look like clowns jumping out of a Volkswagen, all right, <laughs> letting the sheep out. So I thought, man, I'm gonna put my two horse. Actually, Thursday I was shoeing, and I went down a little back road, and I saw a nice stock trailer that was an older one, but man, it was just what I wanted. I used to have one just like it. It just rusted to the ground. But some man kept this one under the shed, so I find I thought, man, I want that stock track. So I thought, you know what? Man, me and Mr. Allison, we can we can sell snow cones to an Eskimo. Amen. <laughs> all right. What are you doing? So we said, we we won't sell this two-horse trailer. So I said, all right, I'm gonna go ahead and buy that trailer. So I put the two-horse trailer on on the internet for sale, and then about 15 hours later, somebody pulled up, said, we want it. Bam, they bought it. And so I'm talking to them, and they said, do you, you have the paperwork to it? I said, I do. Let me run to the house and get it. And I looked up the, ro uh, the, the trail to the house, and here goes out. I said, where are you headed? She said, I'm going to get that paperwork in the title, honey. She was already a step ahead of us. So I just went back down there and acted like I knew what I was doing. I said, I might run to get it, you know. But I'm thankful. I don't take that for granted. Not that I ever have, but very much more so today. Well, she took off after that time. And last night, I, we run a few steers, so I brought a horse, and we roped a little bit. And I was thinking to myself, 
All right, but I'm always thinking ahead. What I got to do to shut this thing down? I got to get the vest, helmet, and rope that Vern brought. Make sure I put it somewhere. We didn't need it. Dustin had everything, but just to be safe, he dropped one some off. I need to put that where he can get it. He turned the air conditioner off upstairs. I need to water the sheep. And I need to water the horses. And I look over there, and Allison's pulling the water hose. <laughs> She's already got the sheep to water, the horse water. You know, I think about those things. I'm very thankful for my wife. When I think about how God restored Job, that's one of many things in my family. I think about Cody. He's got a, a great wife. Old, old Creed's over there. Creed, you want to come up and sing for us? How about put on a diaper and, and a pacifier? You know, that's, that. that's my grandson. He's not. But I'm thankful that the Lord has been good to me. Amen? Amen. Yeah, sometimes He's good to us in spite of us. Amen. But I'm thankful for my wife and the blessing that she is to me and vice versa. There's a, not a day goes by that we don't tell each other thank you. And sometimes I think it's good for us to go through some hard times. How many of you ever had an old, old hoop that broke down on you a lot and you finally got a little better ride? It just meant more to you when you got a, something you can get from point A to point B. So I'm very thankful uh, for my wife. Not that I haven't always been, but we're thankful for each other. Not a gate, day goes by. We feel like the Lord blessed us so richly. And I'm glad that God restores out of Job 42. Amen? Amen. Last night, you never know what God's going to do. Uh, Dustin and Mr. Tommy invited some guys to fight bulls and I might add I am grateful for the bullfighters last night. Hey. Dustin and what was the other guy's name? I know we got Josh and, Josh and Daniel. I didn't get to meet Daniel personally but man, these three guys Dustin, Josh and Daniel usually the mutton busting I'm a wore out son of a gun, alright? I'm hanging on to a sheep by two ears and telling the kid to, you know, come on down there and get ready and dad drops them off and then I take off running with them. They did it all last night. But I appreciate them. And you know, the neat thing me and Allison had talked last night, some of those kids, it sounds exciting to ride a sheep until you get sitting on it and it starts moving and quivering under you sometimes. And sometimes they're like, oh, I'm good. <laughs> Praise the Lord, I'm going to go get me a hot dog at the concession stand, which I don't blame. Them. But those bullfighters, Dustin and, and, and Josh and Daniel, they would start talking to them kids. And they'd get around them. It was like a pep rap. And I think, man, if we as Christians would do that to one another, there ain't anything we couldn't do. You know, the bullfighters get around that little bitty fella, boy, they'd be down this tall. And the bullfighters get around and say, you'll never, one of them looked at him in the eye and said, you'll never touch the ground. I got you. Can I get a good amen? These little kids, boy, that shoot as tall as they are, be like getting on a pool this tall to some of them. And every one of them, they said, you'll never touch the ground. I'll run with you. I'm going to ask your parents what you want. Dad said, run with them. Some of them, Dad said, let them go. Praise the Lord. That's okay, too. But those bullfighters said, I heard them tell two kids specifically, you'll never touch the ground. You know, sometimes when we get afraid, I think that's what the Lord wants to do to us. That was a sermon to me. Yeah. He said, you'll never touch the ground. They grabbed the back of them a little vest. And Dustin's running with two sheep ears in his hand. <laughs> we got guys on each side hanging on. And when it gets a little hairy, they just pick that kid up and set him on the ground. Can I get a good amen? <laughs> How many of you know we, we've, we've, we've had to nod in the buck and shoot of life a few times, right? Amen. And there was always a bullfighter there. It was Jesus. Amen. amen. And he was there for us. And, and he had our hand even when we didn't know he had our backs. And, and took us by the hand many times. But one of these bullfighters, after the deal, I went up to him. And you never know who God's going to use. And I tried to pay him. And he said, ah, I remember you. <laughs> He'd been dusting and brought him up to the house probably 10 or 12 years ago or more. He said, yeah, I remember you. He said, I remember one time, I, I actually came to Jasper County Cowboy Church one Sunday years ago, broke a bunch of concrete and bent a horseshoe into a heart. He said, I remember you. You've been a horseshoe into a heart. I don't want to tangle with you, but I ain't going to take you money. <laughs> I said, oh, we were just cutting, you know. I said, I don't bend horseshoes anymore. I do, but with an anvil and a hammer. I've gotten a little wiser as I get older. But I said, man, let me pay you all something. He said, you're not going to pay me anything. Boy, we went back and forth. And he just refused to ask. I mean, to take any money. But I would have never expected the next words out of his mouth. He said, how's your daughter doing? 
my youngest daughter. He said, I know her. He said, I saw her at one time and talked to her. Told her about making good choices. He said, you know, I had made perfect choices. How many of us in here have made perfect choices? We'll just find out who you are. <laughs> we made some mistakes. But he said, you know, I, I remember your last name. And I met, I met your daughter one time. And I told her, man, get lined out, get with the right crowd. Your family loves you. And he said, you know, she told me that her family sure loves her. And you never know who God's going to use. I forgot who he was. I was trying to give him money for fighting bulls. And as we got out, walked away from everybody, he said, I know your daughter, man, I'm praying for her. Man, she's a good girl. He said, man, just, I don't know. I guess he just, somehow or another, they met each other. And he said, man, I'm, I'm just checking on your daughter. I, I met her and I knew the name. And, and then she said, yeah, my dad is, is the guy I used to, you know, uh, been the horse shoes at the bull ride. He said, oh, I, I, I remember him. I ain't messing with her. Ain't it? No. <laughs> well, he was just joking around. But he was, he, he asked about Bailey. He remembered her. And, you know, I said, man, let me give you something. He said, all I want you to do is pray for me. Amen. Isn't that cool? Yes. And really and truly, you never know who God's going to use. To me, that touched my heart. And I just went over to try to give him a little money to cover some fuel. And before it was over, he was checking on my family. He remembered Cody, he remembered Shelby. You know, I said, man, I remember all, all the kids. And he said, you know, I actually met your youngest daughter not too long ago. How's she doing? Man, pray for me, you know. And so next thing you know, dang, I was going to bless him and try to cover his, his, his gas money that he ministered to me. The fact that he cared about my family. Amen. Amen. And he, he and apparently again, God put my family on his heart and he just happened to ask about my whole family. I thought, man, I went over there to be a blessing to him. And next thing I know, he blessed me. Amen. Amen. So my question to you today is, are we spiritually in shape? Now, we want to try to stay in shape. Uh, thank the Lord. I don't work out like I used to. But I still try to stay somewhat in, in shape physically so I can do my job. 1 Peter chapter 5, verse 5 through 11. And we're fixing to go on overtime in 45 seconds. So I'm going to go quick, all right? <laughs> 1 Peter chapter 5, verse 5 through 11 says, In the same way, you who are younger must accept the authority of the elders, and all of you dress yourselves in what? Humility as you relate to one another. Now here's the rest of verse 5. God opposes the proud, but gives grace to the humble. How many of you could use a little grace in your life? So God resists the proud or opposes them and gives grace to the humble. Verse 6. So humble yourselves under the mighty hand of God and at the right time He will lift you up in honor. Give all your worries and cares to God for He cares about you. Now that's a week long sermon right there. Give our worries and cares to Him because He cares for us. Verse 8 is my key. Stay alert and watch out for your great enemy, the devil. He prowls around like a roaring what? Wow. He may be a lion, but he's on a, he, he's on a chain. Can I get a good amen? amen? He's on a leash. Looking for someone to devour. Stand firm against him and be strong in your faith. Remember that your family of believers all over the world is going through the same kind of sufferings you are. In his kindness, God called you to share in his eternal glory by means of Christ Jesus. So after you have suffered a little while, he will, here we go again, what? Restore. Restore, support, and strengthen you. Let's say it again together. He will restore, support, and strengthen you. I don't know about you, but I could use all three of those. I'm thankful that God is a restorer. He supports us. He strengthens us. And he will place you on a what? Firm foundation. That's when we don't get blown away by the winds when we're on a solid foundation. And that solid foundation has to be Christ. On Christ the solid rock I stand. stand. All other ground is what? Sink and stand. So he puts us on a firm foundation. And part of that firm foundation means us being spiritually mature and in good shape, spiritually speaking. All power to him forever. So are we spiritually in shape? 
I don't go to the gym anymore, but a lot of times I'll at night I'll try to do a hundred push-ups, make it a game, see if I can get it done without taking a break. Sometimes Allison will come out of the bedroom and think, Dear Lord, I thought something was bad wrong with you. I said, No, I'm just on number 60. Say a prayer. <laughs> but at least that keeps me in somewhat of shape. So I'll, my point is, are we spiritually in shape? And the only way you can get spiritually in shape and be strengthened and restored is you gotta you gotta get in the book. Can I get a good day Amen. You can't be what old Uncle Bobby told me 22 years ago down by the crooked tree that Jesus loved me. That's great. But once we're a Christian, we gotta crack open the bread a lot. Amen. Amen. And get it in there for ourselves every day. We need to get the word in us to some. Nobody here, I don't think, only eats once a week. If you do, brother, don't. Whew, man, you need to talk. Amen. Mm -hmm. I, eat, I eat about five or six times a day. Small portions, but you can ask my wife. I love to eat. I don't eat large amounts, but I eat several times a day, which I think keeps my tab metabolism going. As you can tell, I'm not real laid back anyway. So, I mean, we, I'm always on the go. But I'm going to tell you all an interesting story about somebody that wasn't in shape and we're out of time. Everybody say, I love you, Pastor. <laughs> Y'all gonna meet me at the door next Sunday and say, I want my four and a half minutes back. <laughs> I want to be the first one to the restaurant. Back in the early 90s, I got the opportunity to the Cowboy Church. Thank God for Cowboy Churches. I don't know if I'd know Jesus today if it wasn't for one. Amen. Amen. I got the opportunity to go into Mexico. And they would take 15 Americans and we would go into Mexico to these big bull ridings. There would be 30 head bull ridings. They would match 15 Mexican guys. 15 Americans, they would, we would drive in. When I went to Bible school in Tulsa, they would actually fly me into Monterey. And it was probably dangerous at the time, but I would go in. The least I ever won, it was like can't, taking candy from a baby. All you had to do was make a whistle. Now, that sounds easy, right? But it's not that easy to stay on the bull all the time. But the bulls wasn't that bad. The least I ever won was $900 in one weekend. In 1993, that was a lot of money. Yes. <laughs> and so I started, I went the first time, and I was a little nervous about it. I went over there and came home. The first time I come back with $1,250, and I was 23 years old, I was like, I like these trips, praise the Lord. <laughs> so then I start, every time there's an opportunity, I go. One weekend, I come home with $1,650 in 1993 for 16 seconds of work. I think I had to get on two bulls that time. A lot of driving, a lot of traveling. I had to drive to Laredo. It was a little bit scary. But every time, I'd come back with a lot of money. And I was very blessed that God opened that door. And so I had an old buddy that had retired from bull riding and was on a round bale. How many of you know what I mean? He, he kind of filled, I'm filled out bad. I'm not in any kind of bull riding shape by far. So, man, he, he kind of filled out over the last three years. But he saw these, I mean, I cash money I was bringing back. And he said, I think I'm going to get on the bull. I said, bro, please, man, I love you. You're my friend. <laughs> He's the one who gave his life to Christ three weeks before me. So I, I knew he was going to go to heaven, but I said, we're not ready to get a load up, you know, this weekend. So I said, don't do it, man. You're a little bit too... Too thick, man. God bless you. I love you, but don't. I wouldn't get on no bullets. I'm going. Oh, I can still ride one. So we go all the way to Laredo in the car, get him on a bus, and we rode 18 hours on a bus into Mexico, all the way to Guadalajara, Mexico, on a bus. Now I call it Guadalajara. It was a long way. One day I'll tell you the rest of the story. The driver of the bus was intoxicated. <laughs> And we went through some mountains and he was throwing beer cans out and get him another. And I'd wake up and think, Lord Jesus, I got a man that's intoxicated driving a bus through the mountains. I just go back to sleep and I didn't want to think about it. But we made it. We get to Guadalajara. Ron Knight and draws a bull. He's pretty good. I'd seen him before. Turned back to the left and got it on. I had a big old flat horn bull. I'll never forget it. He's in that chute. He's, he's fixing to go. I'm pulling my bull rope, and they're ready. I'm, I'm heating my rope up. Ron goes out there. Bull goes out too. Turns back to the left. Ron went to the right. <laughs> Ooh. Landed on his shoulder. Had a terrible shoulder. Come, even the wind could blow and his shoulder come out. So his shoulder come out. So he's flopping around on the ground like a fish on the bank. Hollering, ah, my shoulder. He's rolling around. It's hard to stay focused when somebody out there hurt. And you're trying, I'm trying to focus on what I'm doing. 
So they finally had to shut the deal down. And they come out to get him with a stretcher. And I'll never forget this stretcher. I'll finish this story another day. It was the tailgate of a Chevrolet pickup. <laughs> we knew we was in trouble. So four guys with little ropes on air, air, They had the corner of the tailgate of the Chevrolet pickup. They dropped the tailgate, flopped him on it, and took him out of the arena. <laughs> Laid him on the ground, and they couldn't communicate. He's hollering, ah! My shoulder hurts. They can't understand what he's saying. So they're screaming something back at him. Next thing you know, they take a lamp rope and put it on his wrist. So he's laying on the ground and they start pulling on his shoulder. By that time, he's, he's talking to them then. They just don't know what he's saying. They can't get it out. So they put him in the back of an old ambulance. I mean, just flat on the cargo van. There was no, no bounce to it. Just throw him in the back of it and took him off. We didn't know where he went. We couldn't communicate. Dear Jesus, I hope we see you again. <laughs> I was nervous. And they said, all right, the bull riders start back, and then I got to go first. And I didn't see my buddy bounced off in an old cargo van. <laughs> I don't think there was a bull on the planet that could have threw me off that day. <laughs> and I packed my hand down, split my tail, so I'm not coming off this thing yet. So I ride him. He just jumps and kicks, stepped off on my feet. And I thought, Dear Jesus, I one second, but I don't know where my friend is, and I don't have him to tell his wife. <laughs> I'm worried about him. He was too big to be riding a bull anyway. He tore his shoulder out. He comes back about two hours later. Man, I've got a lot of money. And he comes at me, and he was pale, and he said, Don't ever go to the hospital. <laughs> if you got to die, just die right there behind the bucket and shoot you the rest of your buddies. Man, I got to the hospital. We couldn't communicate. They just shot me up with some straight morphine. I started freaking out. I finally yanked that out. And I finally got somebody that speaks speaking the language. And we put this thing in together. He said, don't ever get in that van. <laughs> and so long story short, Ron was, he, he was, he probably, he, he, his mind told him he could do it. But he wasn't physically in shape to do that. In the same way with us, sometimes we get a little lazy in our spiritual exercise. Yeah. Reading our Bible every day. So my, my question is, are you spiritually in shape and I owe you? Ooh, I don't even want to talk about it. I owe you eight minutes. <laughs> but God will restore you. Amen? Amen. Amen. Restore God. But make sure you're working out every day. Everybody do this with me like we're doing some curves. Spiritually speaking, it ain't going to matter 100 years from now whether my arms is 3 inches around or 13 inches around. That ain't going to matter. What's going to matter is my heart right of Christ. Amen. Once I am a Christian, am I working my spiritual muscles by spending time with the Lord in prayer and reading my Bible every day? Amen. I want to challenge you to stay in shape. Let's don't be like my buddy Ron. His intentions were good. Amen? Amen. But man, <laughs> and, then, and then once he got hurt, it went downhill from there. <laughs> So we want to make sure we're spiritually in shape. We don't want to be riding no Chevrolet tailgate as a stretch. Amen. Lord, may we stay spiritually in tune with you. May you restore us. May you put us on a firm foundation. We commit every day to make sure that we're spiritually somewhat fit and that we're working on our walk with you every day. Reading the Word, spending time in prayer. You never accepted Christ as Lord and Savior? Today is the day. Just open your heart and say, Lord Jesus, come into my heart and be my Lord and Savior. Have your way in my life. I give you my life as an offering. I love you, Lord. I give you the reins of my life. Have your way with me, and I'll follow you the rest of my days. In Jesus' name. Everybody say it? Amen. Hey, I love you all. I am going to have to jump out here and run some sheep in the trailer and load two horses. I got a hammer down. Y'all pray for the Hambrick family. It's the greatest church in the world. We'll see y'all Wednesday night. And uh, don't forget, we'll have potluck next Sunday. Be sure to sign up. Thank you for